medical tourism, now yes. we have divorce tourism. Uh, the Dominican Republic has been the destination for uh, many of my clients, some of my friends. And you can go there, one party can go there and get a divorce. With, wait, but wow. Without the other's knowledge or? Well, the other party has to know about okay. it. Okay. But I can go alone. I could claim my husband knows about it, and I can come back, and a uh, decree will come in the is mail. Is that legal? It is legal unless my husband claims he was not properly notified. So then he would come into a New York court to try and overturn the divorce decree. But then do you want to stay with that person? Wow. <laughs> exactly. Say, exactly. You know, by the way, I divorced you this By the way, weekend. so yes. it's <laughs> the classic scene when you come home and the house is empty and yes. there's a note, by the way, we're divorced. Well, it's a way for the court to triage the cases. Yeah. Yes. So instead of a very simple, uncomplicated a divorce languishing for eight months and building up legal fees. It's, uh, it's a way to it just deal with it. Wow. The Small Business Administration estimates that 52% of all U.S. businesses are home-based. Yet this particular deduction, uh, many people don't benefit from because it was a red flag for an audit for many years. So a lot of taxpayers, a lot of my clients said, I'm not even going to bother taking it because they didn't want to go through the audit. But the IRS has issued issued some helpful guidance that we can deduct $5 per square foot of that portion of the home that we use exclusively for our business. Uh, you hit the nail on the head as it relates yes. as it relates to a prenuptial agreement. So mm -hmm. as an estate planning attorney, which is what I basically do, I advise uh, people to have their children enter a prenuptial agreement to keep the family assets, the business assets separate. Uh, but when we have wrongdoing, when we have fault within a marriage, when the guy cheats, and the woman is deciding whether or not to give him a second chance, she'll often ask for a postnuptial agreement, saying, okay, you get one more chance, but in the event that you fall off the wagon again, I get I get X. it all. Exactly. And I can get a divorce in any state now that we all have no-fault divorce. But beyond that, uh, we might want a penalty clause. Mm -hmm. If I've given up five years of my life uh, in my career where I could have advanced to X level and we're breaking up because of your cheating, then am I not entitled uh, to a monetary settlement? I would urge both parties to have a non-disclosure requirement within the prenup where they're not allowed to speak negatively about each other in public. It would be awfully difficult for them to resist the temptation because that could mean millions and millions of dollars. They don't have standing, they're time barred. California would require an objectant to file a proceeding within 120 days. That has clearly come and gone. I think the number one reason that people talk about the validity of a will, even in the absence of a bona fide challenge, is the hope of a settlement. A love contract is a legal document, sort of like a prenuptial agreement that can also include a list of deal breakers, where if he cheats, she gets $5 million. Reported that she would receive $500,000 per episode of infidelity on the part of Justin Timberlake. Increasingly, we were seeing celebrities with lifestyle clauses. Uh, what would happen in the event of infidelity or substance abuse issues. If I were advising Kanye, which I'm not, uh, I would strongly suggest that he have a non-disclosure or confidentiality clause within their love contract. Make sure that the rules are crystal clear. Never spot someone because then they can claim that uh, you agreed to spot them. There is uh, a winner and it's uh, an office pool. You can be sure that people are going to say, I thought I was in. I thought that you were going to cover me. That's our, our usual mm -hmm. deal. That's why it's so important to have rules and never deviate from the rules. Put the money in a trust. 
because we all know that the win is subject to income taxes, but it's also subject to 55% estate taxes. Well, that's brilliant diplomatic speak. So regret, does he regret, you know, the overreaction in India? Does he regret uh, the U.S. attorney's action? It's does vague enough, so it's, he's not really calling anybody out. And the hope is that everyone hears what they want to hear from it, because at the end of the day, this is crying out for a settlement. India is one of our most important uh, and treasured allies uh, in the world. And uh, it's a terrible concern for not only U.S. diplomats abroad, but we have 60,000 American nationals living and working in India. So, you know, the anti-American sentiment there is very, very troubling. This is crying out to be settled. Do you find it kind of curious that they, they gave her some freedom as, as far as, like, trying to find a babysitter before they brought her into custody, getting her some coffee, and then yet they did a full body search? You know what? I'm not really persuaded by that. Uh, Pre Barara saying we got her a cup of coffee. It's like big deal. You look at uh, former U.S. Attorney Rudy Giuliani bringing Michael Milken in. You know, a, a monster uh, by all accounts. And did they he, give him a full body search when they? They made an appointment. You know, in a very nice way for him to come in and surrender. They did. She, yes, she could but not have been expecting this arrest, or she would not have taken uh, her daughter to school no, with a legal separation, the couple is still technically married, but it does allow them to come up with an agreement on the property issues and custody of the children. There is a chance that they had no prenuptial agreement coming into this, in which case California law says community property half and half.